today, as I said, we're going to be talking about logging in and registering. And I think the first thing we're going to do is actually visit this site called Have I Been Pwned? Have any... <laughs> like, what the heck are we doing there? What is this for? Have any of you guys actually been to this site before? You have, okay. All right. Have I been pwned or... Pwned. All right, so yeah, what this is, is we can check to see if we have an account that has been compromised in a data breach. So, with that being said, does anybody have like an old email address that say they never use anymore, it's just kind of like a throwaway at this point, that we should throw, okay? Okay. A-L-I-C-E. Robin. Yahoo, nice. Like it. Oh no. <laughs> Pwned. <laughs> Bro. Pwned on four breach sites. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Modern Business Solutions in October of 2016. All right. Hey, look, a large MongoDB file containing tens of millions of accounts was shared publicly. Wow. MongoDB, that's something you guys are going to learn later on. All right. MySpace, classic. Any, any, any of you youngins who don't know what MySpace is, you missed out on a good thing. All right. <laughs> yeah. Um, River City Media spam list. <laughs> Verifications.io, okay, so we don't really know what all these things are, but these are things that uh, have been breached. Let's try one other email address. What else you guys got? What about Gmail? I, I saw a hand back there. What do you got? Okay. 0700 at gmail.com. <laughs> oh, oh. oh. <laughs> MySpace, yes. What does that mean, though? Verifications that I, uh... What do so MySpace suffered a, a data breach in 2008 that exposed almost 360 million accounts. Wow. That's a few. All right. Um, and then in, in May of 2016, the data was offered up for sale on the Real Deal Dark Magnet or Dark Market website. Wow. Included email addresses, usernames, and hashes of the first 10 characters of the password. Converted to lowercase and stored without a salt. All right, there we go. And then we've got verifications.io. I think we saw that on a different one. Is this Town of Salem? That's some kind of game, huh? Okay. Oh, and then you've got some other. Oh, wow, there's a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Face Punch. Neopets. Let's go. My job. <laughs> hey, man, you're on. <laughs> you're on fire. Look at this. Neopets. Smogon. Ticket Fly. Tumblr. <laughs> Woo! Oh, That's a good question. So, so, and this is something that we're going to talk about today. Um, yeah, each one of these will kind of explain what the actual, uh, what the data that was breached was. But we're going to talk a little bit about whether whether these sites should actually be storing plain text passwords. So, if we're storing plain text passwords, what does that mean? Well, it means if a data breach happens, they have not only all of your data, but they also have your plain text password. Could mean that they also have your password for other sites if you're using the same password from site to site. Okay? So a couple of those things are not good. Number one, you don't want to be storing the same exact password for different sites, especially if it's something like banking or you know government related where it's something that's actually pretty serious and you don't want someone getting into your account and messing things up. Um, the other thing is that site or that uh, that organization should not be storing your password in plain text. Okay? So if you click on a reset password link or forgot password or whatever for some site, 
and that email that they send you actually gives you back your password, what does that mean? They have your password in plain text. They're storing your actual password in plain text, exactly. So that's probably not a website that you want to be interacting with. Probably not. That, that's William. not a good security practice. <laughs> what, say that again? Is that William? William? <laughs> <laughs> What's the what's the purpose of this of the have I been pwned? Yeah. Like so what so we know so okay, they are using our data, right? So what do we do? It says right there three steps for oh, security. So yeah, so so there's some things that you can do. Um, protect yourself using one password. It doesn't have to be one password. There are other ones too. There's also LastPass. I think there's one called Dash Lane, um, which I believe gives you some limited, uh, their free account gives you something like 50 different passwords and I think on only one device. But on LastPass you can have a free account which gives you on multiple devices. I don't believe there's any limit to the number of passwords. Yeah, at least 96. And you've got LastPass, okay. Yeah, I use LastPass as well. It is excellent, um, highly recommended. So that way when you, when you use something like LastPass, you essentially only have to remember one master password. And then what you do is that when you go to these individual sites, you can use LastPass to, to create something that's nice and secure. Say, I don't know, 20 some odd characters, upper, lowercase, symbols, all that kind of stuff. Which one, your master password? No, the generated password. You don't. LastPass is, is doing that work for you. But well, what if LastPass just well, so, and you're yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're really screwed. But, um, so the way that LastPass works, um, and we won't go, at, go in too much depth, but it's storing your encrypted passwords on your local device, and so you also have to remember your LastPass password to actually be able to get access to that, okay? So they don't have a... So, so what they have on their servers is an encrypted version of your password but they also don't have the key to decrypt it. That, that key is from you entering in your master password. Oh, so, so you have to memorize that key. So you, yeah, you have to make sure that you remember your, your master password. Otherwise, they do have some recovery options, but um, that's something that they introduced kind of recently. Yeah. Yes? Is literally how like, Apple security works. Apple? Oh, nice. And right. then on their end, it's just an encrypted version of theirs. But then you have the key to it, like face ID, touch ID, or whatever. And they don't have the key to that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's excellent. So you can know that, or you, you can kind of rest easy knowing that people aren't fiddling around with your stuff. Or don't have the potential to fiddle around with your stuff. Right? Well, there's, there's one thing I don't understand. So like they always hash your password and then store mm -hmm. it in their database, right? Yeah. But the way hash works is that it always gives the same hash mm -hmm. if you're providing the same password, right? Right. But can I just copy the the hash and then use the hash? No. But the hash is still no, because because think about it this way, and, and I get what you're asking. So if I'm trying to log into a site using your credentials, for instance, and I know your password <laughs> hash, uh -huh. um, and I know your email. If I enter in the password hash in that password oh, thing, it's going to hash that okay. hashed version, yeah, which obviously won't match what's in the database. Yeah. I so. Have, I have one question. Hmm? No one's been able to reverse the algorithm where you put in the hash and get, since it is consistent every time, it's quite strange. It's, it's not uh, possible. It's randomly no, yeah, it's not it's not random, but uh, but yeah, that's a good question, and I, I don't exactly know the answer to that. Uh, it'd be something to look into, though. So if you find anything in interesting on the internet about it, definitely share it with the group. Um, but that's another thing we're going to talk about. Like, what what is the difference when we talk about encryption versus hashing? Does anybody have a, a concept of what what the difference is there? So encryption is two way. Correct. So like your password or not, uh, so something can turn it into an encryption 
and then you can use a key to like unlock that, to reverse the encryption back to the thing that you turned into. To its original value. But password, when you hash something, it's one way. So when you, so say you have a password, and then you hash it, you make it into a hash, and there's no way you can turn it back into a password. Right. So that's exactly, that's exactly correct. Hashing is a one-way function. So it's an algorithm where we can turn some input into some output, but we can't go back from that output to the input. So that's the key, and that's why when, we, when we're storing things in our database, we want to be using hashing. So that if a person were to, to get access to that database and see those hashes, well, there's not anything they can do with them as far as logging into the front end. Granted, now they have all of your data, potentially, anyway, but, <laughs> but notwithstanding that, at least um, from, a, from a user standpoint, if they see your password hash for site A, even if your, your password for site B was the same, they, they don't now have your plain text password. So they can't then go and try to log into uh, site B using your credentials, because they only have your hash. Make sense? All right. Cool. So with that little intro, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to update our assignment that we were working on yesterday. Not really an assignment, but the demo. The ninjas demo, rather than just being where we're creating new ninjas and we're showing them on the in the template, we're going to have kind of a registration function which allows us to pick a password for our ninjas, and then later on we'll be logging those ninjas in. All right. So let's go into our project. What do I need to do every time I'm starting up my project? Activate my environment. So let's get there. It's in environments, flask, bin, activate. OK? Yeah. When you do that uh, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, does that mean like you can be in any folder in your As long as my path is correct, yeah. So, so I know that, that my environment's path is going to be two levels up from where I'm at. OK? So if you go to every object in Flash, it would be dot, dot, slash, slash, and Yeah, if your environment is, is up only one level, then do it that way. Yeah. So the dot, dot just means, again, that we're going up one level from where we are. All right? So we got it activated. Let's get this thing started. Python server.py. OK, so we're running our development server. Yesterday, we actually created only one template that had both the form and where we were showing all of our ninjas. Let's split it up this time. So I'm going to create a second page where we're actually just doing the adding. So let's go new, nin oops, new ninja. .html. And then inside new ninja.html, let's grab the, um, the form that we had for this one. So cut that out. And then in here, let's just get a page started. So boom, new page. We'll give this a quick title, new ninja. Or we'll say ninja login reg. All right, and then I'm just going to paste in my form. Let's create a new route to actually, or actually we'll change what the route was for it. We already have, I guess we don't have any logic for it, right? So inside my server.py, let's create the route, app.route, forward slash ninjas, and then we'll just say new, def, new ninja we don't really need to have anything in there we're just going to return render template and then the template that we're going to render is going to be ninjas new ninja.html all right let's see if that actually works so we're on localhost 5000 5000 ninjas new OK, so our form is still working. Let's um, change some things about it. Now we want to actually register a new ninja. So what, what field do you think we might want to add here? Password? 
Boom. Yeah, they need to have a password. Exactly right. So let's go down here. Div label password. And then we'll go input, and I can do type password by doing that colon right there. Okay, the name of it's going to be password. Cool. And so we're also going to make this a, because of the type password, let's see what that looks like on the screen. Nice, right? So it's actually on screen, we're not actually seeing what we're typing. So that's cool. All right, now we also need to make an adjustment inside of our schema because before we didn't, we didn't actually have a uh, password field, right? So let's open up um, SQL Workbench. Oops, I think I was doing, I was playing around with something else. Did anyone ever figure out the uh, current timestamp only on insert that we were talking about yesterday? No. All right. Well. I, I had it kind of working. It was just um, up, created that was now and updated that was now and then on update now. So I just all together no commas. Now space on update now. Like this. Now on, uh, no, 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 it should now, be on create though. Now, parens, and then on update now. It's like two separate statements. Just on, on the. Now, on, like on that? The, not at the, up, the created at, on the updated at, it's that. On the created at, it's just now. What you wrote for created at as the default, that should be what the updated at yeah, yeah, but but isn't the created at then going to be updated every time I, I create or every time I update something and I don't supply a created at value, won't it just overwrite my original created at? What I saw it doing is no? it, it would just stay the same every time I update it, but the update would change. So I was thinking that like now does it once, but then on update is like, like a condition that every time it updates, it'll up, like on update now. Okay. Well, let's we'll test that out later. But uh, I and I hope that works too because it's definitely something that I've been looking to to figure out or fix. So let's just add for now um, a password field. Oops, not in caps. And then we'll say this is going to be two fifty five. All right, and then we'll move it up up here above those guys. And then we need to apply this. Okay, so those are, that's the query that it's actually running in my SQL for us to make this change. Okay, successfully. All right, now let's just go back to our query here. I think we still had something in our ninjas table. We still have William. He survived. <laughs> let's, uh, how do we empty this guy out? Anybody know how we get rid of all the records? Can I just, oh, here we go, truncate. Let's truncate the table, right? That would actually remove all the records from it. Truncate. Okay, so now if I run this again, nothing. Cool. All right, so that's what we want. We're actually, we have this password field. Now we actually need to do something with it. And as we were talking about, we don't want to just store plain text passwords, okay? So we are going to install another dependency here that will enable us the, uh, to hash these passwords. All right. So let me just stop the server for a second. And let's go pip install flask bcrypt. OK, so we successfully installed bcrypt. And then inside of our server to actually use this, I'm going to need to import something. So let's say, and this is kind of weird because when we import, we actually go flask underscore bcrypt. We are importing this. What does that look like? Class. A class, that's correct. So here in the, uh, in the platform here, come up here. So as you can see, even though we, we installed flask hyphen bcrypt, we're actually importing from flask underscore bcrypt. So be careful about that. Very easy to mess up. 
And then to actually create an instance of bcrypt, what we need to do is we need to create, or we need to invoke bcrypt against the app that we have. All right? So can I do that up here? Can I say bcrypt, whoops, bcrypt equals bcrypt against my app? Will that work? No, why not? App hasn't yet been created. Yeah, so we're reading this, and, and the uh, interpreter is also reading this from top to bottom. All right, so let's move that down. Cool. All right, let's restart the server. Server.py. All right, we're still cool. So now let's just practice. Um, we're going to send through a password from our front end form, and then we're going to practice actually hashing it and see what happens with that. So, in the route where we were creating new ninjas, which is right in here, before we, um, let's just comment out this logic for now. All we're going to do is, uh, oops, let me comment this out too. All we're going to do for now is we're just going to hash this password, and then we're going to print out the result of that. So what does the hash password look like? All right, so let's go hashed hash pw, something like that, and we're going to say bcrypt dot generate, I think it's generate hash password, right? Generate password hash. So the syntax, or the actual uh, function call is going to be important here. So password hash. And then note here, what we're going to take in is just simply going to be the request.form at password. Okay, so that's all we need is just the password that we're trying to hash. Quest.form and then password. And then all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to print it out. And then we all we already had this little redirect here down at the bottom. So we'll just follow that back to the page and then we'll we'll keep track on our console what's happening here. Alright, cool. So let's Insert a password here, and I think I'm going to need a valid email, so we'll say a at b.com, and we'll say a password is hello. Oh, redirected us to ninjas. Okay, so note here, this is the print that we were talking about. Can you guys see that okay? The hash. Okay, so that's the hash that bcrypt is creating for us. So when when we store this thing in the database, it's actually going to look like this, not like hello. Right? Now let's test something else that's kind of interesting. So this is the first password that we generated. So I'll just do a comment up here. Now this was for hello. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create hello again, and I want you guys to tell me do you think the hash password is going to be the same or different than what we just got here right now? Let's do hands. Um, well, do, yeah, let's say it's for a different user, but basically it's just a different form submission. Okay, so let's do hands. Who thinks it's going to be the same? Same password. Yeah, we're going to enter in hello again. All right. So that was roughly about half. All right, who thinks it'll be different? Okay, about half and half, right. Okay, so let's test it out. So that was the first one that we got. Let's enter it in again. And again, our route was new. So let's do a at b.com, hello. All right, let's check our hash, hash password here. Different, huh? Interesting. Anybody know why that is? Yes, very good. Wow. Um, yeah, so, so the situation here is that we're doing, bcrypt is doing a process called salting. Okay? And so before it actually creates a password for us, it's all, or a hash password, it's adding something to the mix to the password, 
and it should be something specific, say specific to that particular time. So in other words, the salt is going to change depending on whether you registered right now or five seconds later and so on. So something that's changing from time to time, which means that if I have multiple people in my database who have the same exact password, their hashes are actually going to look different. Now, how, does B, how is Bcrypt able to do this if it doesn't know what the salt is? Any guesses on that? Or does it know what the salt is? Based on a time stamp. Bcrypt is actually storing the salt somewhere inside this, uh, this hash password. OK, um, I'm trying to think if it mentions that here in the password, or in this little section here. So salt. So it extracts the salt from the hash and applies it to the provided password and then compares the result to the saved hash. So if they match, it returns true. So this is how we're going to basically check a password and make sure that this is the same user who registered with us. Okay. So Bcrypt is able to take the salt out of the actual stored password hash and then you know, re rerun the algorithm to generate the hash again from whatever password we supply. This is on login. And then we can tell, you know, is that the correct password? And if it is, then we'll let that person in. All right. So the next step that we need to do, um, we're, we're correctly hashing the password, so this is nice. All we have to do now is save all of this stuff to the database. So before, we were just saving the actual form data. What's going to change in here? So let me un uncomment these guys that we had before. Take this out real quick. OK, so before, here's kind of the, the interesting thing. Before, we were just passing in request.form. Because this is a you know an immutable multi-dict as it's called, so it's a dictionary. But that form only had the the data that we were interested in. So it had first name, last name, and email. This time we're taking in another input, which is password. However, do we want to pass in the password that comes in through the form directly to our database? No. What do we want to pass in? The hashed version of it, right? So rather than doing it this way, we're going to have to create a dictionary that has all the values that we want and then pass that into our query. So let's get rid of this right here. Don't need to print that anymore. And then I'm going to create, oops, let's do it under here. So we'll just create a data dictionary. Um, and actually before that, I'm just going to save a reference to request.form so that I don't have to write that every single time. So I've got a reference to form now. We'll say data equals a dictionary. And then first name is just going to be form at first name. Let me um, comma. OK, so let's just copy this down a couple times. And then this will be last. This will be email. And then um, the, the last thing that I want, again, is my password, which is going to be what? Hashed underscore PW. OK. So this is the data that I'm going to pass on to my query. So now I need to actually change a couple things in here. I need to add password here, because that's a new column that we're going to be adding. Then I need to do the same thing up in here. Wow, that's a serious sneeze. All right, oops, and then I need that guy. OK, so now instead of passing in request.form, what am I going to pass in? Yeah, which was what? Data, correct. Cool, and then let's, um, let's actually save a reference to this. So this is the new ninja. Or let's just call it new ninja equals that. And then we'll just print that out. So we'll print out new ninja as we create that. 
Okay, and then we're gonna we're gonna do the redirect to ninjas, which we were already doing, so that's all good. All right, let's create a ninja. Go to new again. All right, Joel, you're up. Let's create you. Joel at zarbo.com. And your password is going to be password. Pretty sick, right? Very original. Very original, yeah, I thought so too. Okay, so we created our new user. Let's look inside our terminal here. Here again was our returned user. You can see we've got first name, last name, email, password. So again, um, that was the query that was run. Did we actually get? Oh, sorry. So, um, so the new ninja actually, when we insert into the database, it's not returning the entire ninja object. It's returning what? What's this number one mean? That's the actual ID. Correct. Yeah, so if ever we need to know, and, and you guys saw this in your assignments yesterday, if we need to know what the ID of the last added element or user was, whatever it is, we get it back when we run that insert query. Okay? So his ID is one. Let's add one more here. Oops. All right. Tabitha, you're up. Last name, Tabitha? Joiner. Joiner. Got it. All right, Tabitha at joiner.com. And your password is going to be joiner. All right, we got two users, or two ninjas now. So these are potentially two people that we can log in. So let's get into the, uh, to the login portion of this. So we got registration working right. Thumbs on this? How you guys feel about this? Pretty good. Any questions about what we done? So, what we did so far? Generating the password hash and saving that to our database. All good. Good. All right. So let's add a new route where we can actually log in somebody. So let's say app dot route. Let me close this out so we can see this better. So our app dot route is going to be ninjas slash login. What methods do you think we're going to take for that? I think I heard it. Host. All right, so our def will be login. Cool, and we'll just put in pass for now. All right, so now I need to add in an actual um, login form on my page. I've got my registration form. Let's just call this out here. So this is register h2 register. Then down underneath that, let's create an h2 and say this is our this is going to be our login form. All right? So our login form is going to have a uh, so we'll do this twice. So we'll have a div that has a label plus and input. And we'll just say the type is text times two. Oops. <coughs> okay, cool. So where is our action going to go? So we just made the route. Where do we want this to, to go to? I'm trying to see if you guys are paying attention. <laughs> Ninja slash login. That's what we created. And then the method is going to be what? Post. Good. All right. So let's just kind of uh, move things around a little bit. Grab that guy. Go there. Input. Grab the next one down there. OK, cool. So the label, the first input that we need is going to be what? Email. Standard stuff, right? And we'll change this to a type of email. The name of this is just going to be email, just like it's been. And then here, um, we're going to take in the password. So what type should this be? Password. Good. OK, cool. So there we go. We should have everything we need. Let's just refresh this page. 
I go to new. Cool. Looks awesome, doesn't it? Two beautiful forms. Oh, I, I don't have a button. I always forget to add those. All right, so let's just add that real quick. Button, submit, done. There it is. Okay, cool. So now we can actually take in a login. So inside this login, what do you think we're, we're going to check for when a person first sends us back an email and a password? What do we need to know? Yes, primarily we need to find out, is this person even a user in our system? Because if they're not, we're going to ding them right away. You're out, right? You are out, yeah, you're fired. Okay, so, so let's just do something. Let's just print what we're getting from our request.form. .form, and then we'll return a redirect to ninjas slash new because that's where we're doing our stuff right now all right open up the terminal boom let's enter in some email a at b dot com some password submit that make sure it's coming through all right so we got our little immutable multi dict so the email is a at b dot com and our password was some password so it all is working well we're good to go so let's let's get our database involved. Let's if we if we were to pseudo code this, our logic is going to look something like this. So if user in DB, then we're going to check password, right? So if password correct, we'll say something like you're in like that. Else, whoops, else you're out. And then again, if the user was not in the database, we'll say else you're out. All right? Question. Yes. It is. Yes, indeed. That's a good point. All right, so, um, <clears throat> and that, that brings up another point, which is that we hadn't actually imported session yet, so we're going to need that now because when we log in a user, we need to keep track of that user in some way. So let's do that. In addition to all these other imports, let's import session. And we're going to import something new, and this is going to be for our error handling. It's called Flash. Okay. So the way that Flash works is that it allows us to store some information that we're only going to show on the on the very next request. Okay. So if somebody tries to log in and they enter invalid credentials, whether it be password or email, it doesn't matter. We're going to save this Flash error message so that we can show it back to them when we redirect them to the login page so that we can let them know your credentials are, are not good, they're bad, all right? So let's come down here inside of our, our login function. Let's go and check to see if that user is in the DB. So I need to create a new instance of my SQL, right? Connect to my SQL, and again, our schema was called Dojo Schema. And then my query is going to be something like this. So query equals, and actually, I think this time we can pass the form to it. So let's just do this. Let's say MySQL query DB. And then the first argument is going to be the actual query. So how's this going to look? What are the two things that we need when we're grabbing this? Use, or actually three things. Email and password. We need email and password and we also are going to want their ID so that that way if, if it's a good login we can save their ID to the session. Make sense? Alright, so let's say ID, email, password. Why am I doing that instead of a select all? Like a, you know, an, an asterisk. 
yeah, we just don't need to bring in all that other data. We don't really need to know they're created at, updated at, in this case. We just need to know these things. Okay, so from ninjas, where email equals, and then we're going to use this little uh, syntax here again, where we pass in the email. All right, so I should be able to pass in my whole request.form because the request.form dictionary is going to have an email key in it, right? So that should be good. All right, so let's just do this. We're just going to do the query. And then we want to say something like potential users. Why am I calling this users right now? Do we think we're going to get more than one? Could be, but but actually, if I have some protections in my in my application, I, I may be preventing duplicate emails. But anyway, the thing is, <clears throat> what data structure is that going to come back to me in? A list. That's correct. Yeah, and and in JavaScript, <clears throat> excuse me. Woo. Um, in JavaScript, that would be called an array. So yeah, we're going to get back a list. That's why we're just saying potential users. Let's print it out. Print potential users, and then um, we're just re redirecting to new. All right, cool. So let's enter in an email. It's going to be a at b dot com. Jesus, a at b dot com password. Okay, so what did we get inside here? What's this? What does this mean? <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, it's an empty tuple. That's correct. So that means that we got nothing back. There were no users that matched that criteria. All right. So if that's the case, let's uh, let's do something about that. Okay. So we've got our potential users. If there, if that list was empty, what we want to do is we want to set something in the flash so that on the subsequent page visit we can tell them hey your you know your credentials are bad that's all we're going to say something really generic and the reason why we want to be generic is because we don't want to tell a person hey that email was correct because if you tell them the email is correct what might they do try to brute force it right yeah let's, let's just try some different passwords check a rainbow table or something like that where they can check all kinds of different passwords very quickly. All right. So we're going to have a little simple if, if condition here. So if <clears throat> so if len of potential users oops <clears throat> is less than 1, what that meant or what that means is that I don't have a potential user at all. Right? So let's set an error for that. So we're going to say flash, please check your email and password. Something like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to return my redirect right away. Oops, didn't do that right. No. Okay, cool. So if that happens, we're going to do a flash error. Just please check your email and password, and then we're just going to redirect right away to Ninja's new. Um, let's try this out, and let's actually do something with the flash message so that we can um, <clears throat> so that we can show the user that something bad happened. Right? We're going to do something up here, and you guys haven't seen this yet with errors equals get flashed messages. Okay? And then down here we're going to do an end with, which means we're ending this block. So what with means is that we're establishing some variable that's only going to be available inside this particular block. Okay? So errors is just going to be us getting all the flash messages that came in. So if we have <clears throat> if we have some errors, 
let's iterate through them and just print them out to the screen. So how do we want to do that? A for loop, exactly. So we'll just do something like for error in errors. Close that out. And for. Okay, and then each one is just going to be, we're going to print out the error. That's it. Cool. So that should be showing that. Let's try to log in with something that we know is not in the database. <clears throat> So again, I'm going to say a at b, whoops, dot com, password. Hey, I didn't set a sec secret key. All right, you guys didn't warn me. What's happening here? All right, so secret key equals some very secret key. Okay, so, so let's try this again. New a at b dot com password. Cool. So we actually have some, some errors showing up here. We're in good shape. Um, now let's continue on with our logic to actually, yes, you question. <laughs> yeah, would you like me to? No, no, I'm just wondering, like, because yeah. you know, with the, with the way it comes up, it's like, Hey, that looks the same there. Yeah, so let's just add something to our style here. Let's just say, um, yeah, I like that. Um, let's say class of red, color red. Cool. Okay, so then inside my new Ninja page, I need to actually link that style sheet. So here we go. Our href will be URL4 again. Whoops, not user. And then, whoops, it's going to be static file name equals style.css. Close that out. Close these guys out. All right, so let's try that again. B.com. Is that what it was? Hang on one second. Okay, so hard reset. Let's try it again. Is that style sheet not getting loaded? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't even set the class. Hello. Come on, guys. Can you, can you just do it on the keypad? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that That's what I planned to do. We just forgot to add that. So it's all good. Let me, let me close this out. All right. Oops. All right. You guys pleased with that? A little bit of uh, red styling. Wow, it looks pretty good, right? Okay, cool. So, so if that person's not in our database, let's just show the red message. What if they're in the database? then we actually need to check their password. All right, so let's get in here. What we're going to do is we're going to say, so if the length of the, of the potential users was one, uh, hopefully it's just one, not multiple, we'll say that our user is potential user is at index of zero. So that means that that's the first user in, in our list. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to check his, uh, the password that he provided in the form against what we have in our database. So we have this little function here. Uh, check password hash, okay? And we're going to we're going to check what was in the database. That's going to be the first argument. The second argument will be what actually came through the form. Okay. So we'll say um, if Bcrypt check password hash. And the first argument again is going to be user at password. And then the second argument is going to be the password that came in through the form. So again, 
request.form. Um, did I say, oh no, I didn't save a reference to that. At password. So if this is, if this returns true, which it will, it's going to return us true if those two things match, then what can we do? We're going to redirect probably just to the ninjas page. And actually, what's the other thing that we want to do? Let's put the ID in session so that we actually know who this user is. Exactly. So if that matches, let's do something like session at user ID equals user ID. Okay? And then we'll return our redirect, which is going to go to my ninjas page. There. Otherwise, what I want to do, so, so if, I've, if I fail my password match, I'm going to get down here and we'll just print password didn't match. Oops. Didn't match. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to again set a flash error. All right, so we'll just grab this little guy right here. All right, so we're going to return a redirect to Ninja's new, and we're just going to say, please check your email and password, all right? So let's try something. We already have a couple uh, users in our system here. Let's see if we can log somebody in. So the first one that I, that I inserted, uh, Joel, your password was password, correct. All right, so let's try to do, we'll do joel at zarbo.com, but I'm going to enter in something other than that. So we'll say hello. Oops. Hello. Oops. Okay. Let's try that again. So hello. Okay, please check your email and password. So we do have an error, and if I check my, uh, my terminal here, we should see that the error was in the password, because I know that he actually exists. See how we have this little password didn't match log here? So for sure that user exists, but his password was wrong. All right, now let's, um, let's come down here, and we'll just print something if it did match. So if it matched, let's print, yay, user logged in. All right, let's enter in his correct password. So joelzarbo.com password. Okay, so we got redirected, so that looks good. And then, uh, oops. Did I get a, oh, there it is. Sorry, I couldn't see that sometimes. Um, if ever you guys have trouble reading your, uh, your messages in here, what you can do is you can add some, um, some line breaks in front of it. So if you do something like backslash n, backslash n, like that. So that should work. Let's try and see if that works. So ninja slash new. Joel at zarbo.com password. See, so that opens up some space for your logs so that you don't get kind of lost in the mix like I was getting lost. All right, so the other thing that we're probably going to want to do is that once the user is logged in and we now have his user ID in session, let's, on the ninjas page, let's actually say something so that we, we can address him. So we can say something like, hello, Joel. Right. Welcome, Joel. Yeah, I like that too. That's that's great. So let me. Um... <laughs> All right. So on our ninjas page, if I can find that here, what we want to do is we want to check to see the current user. And at this point, we're just going to kind of assume that we have to have a user. So let's say if user ID. 
not in session, where do we want to send them? Block your IP address. <laughs> yeah, like bring down the ban hammer. You're, <laughs> you're finished, right? Yeah, let's just return a redirect and just send them to the Ninja's new page because that's where they can either log in or register. All right. If we get past this point, then that means that we actually have a logged in user and we can um, grab that user's just some information, maybe just first and last name, something like that. Okay, so let's do MySQL. Oops, we were already connecting to MySQL. Let's establish it again. So after we've run a query for all of our users' information, let's get this individual user's information. All right, so after this query, whoops, let me come down here. Okay, so we'll have to establish it again. Why do we need to do this again? Yes, the connection was closed after the previous query that we ran. All right, so I got to connect again, and then I'm just going to say user, um, actually, shoot, it'll be, we'll say logged in users list. I'm trying to be really descriptive here, but, but basically we know that when we run our query, we're going we're gonna to return a list. Okay, so equals mysql.querydb, and then our query is just going to be select, and then I'm just going to grab first name, last name, from ninjas, where id equals the id that we got, right? So id... Okay, and then my dictionary is just going to be very simple. It's just going to be ID is session at user ID. All right, so if I get some length in that, well, I'll definitely get a logged in user because we know that since we've gotten to this point in the code, this person is logged in, right? Okay, so to my template, I want to pass in my logged in user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say user equals logged in users list at zero. That should be the very first user in my list. Okay, and then in my template here, let's just do our little welcome message. So instead of that, we'll say welcome. And then we'll do first name. So user at first name. Oops. And then we'll get their last name too. So user at last name. All right, excellent. So let's see what happens if I refresh this. User was undefined. Why did I even render that if, if uh, user is logged in users list but how did I get this far if I didn't have a user ID in my session, right? If user ID not in session, let's print session. So here, if I hit that route again, so up above my exceptions here, oops, what's in my session? Is it in there right now? Session info. I, I guess this wasn't really clear where my. Uh, hold on one second. So if I go like this and I just do a bunch of line breaks first, let's try to see what's going on here. Uh, don't I have them right here? Detected. All right. Um, 
Let's just clear the session real quick. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, we're in the wrong route, aren't we? <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, guys, my, my brain just went on vacation. We're, we're in the wrong route. <laughs> All right, so, so this is actually the ninjas route, or the, the post-ninjas route, where we're, where we're adding new ninjas. Sorry about that. So actually, this belongs in our in our get route that shows all the ninjas, and that is down here somewhere down here. Okay. Very good observation there. So let's forget about session here. So, so if we get to this ninjas page and the user ID is not in session, let's do that, and then let's just grab the other code that we had in here. Logged in users list. and then get rid of it here because we don't need this on, yikes. We don't want to be passing anything to a redirect, right? Only the route that we're redirecting to. Okay, so here, go like that, logged in users list, and then we'll say user equals logged in users list at zero again. Cool. All right, let's try that again. Joel Zarbo. What's up, man? You're in. You made it past our little uh, wall, right? Cool. So we're done with the first part today. Uh, later on in the afternoon, we'll, we'll get into validations. Um, does anybody have any questions about what we did here? Yes. <coughs> so the net logic checks if there's a um, user ID in the session. Right? Yeah. So if, say, um, I didn't log in, and then I just typed that URL, that shouldn't let me in because I don't have a user ID in my session, right? Correct. But um, because session is saved locally in the cookie, right? Mm -hmm. If I actually know the secret key, I can change the cookie and then put in some random ID and then still get into that, right? Might not want to make your secret keys available for knowledge <laughs> or like for people to find out, yeah. But isn't yeah, obviously, not, nothing is 100% secure, but, but yeah, you don't want to be letting your secret key out there. should be actually secret. Is it, so is it um, normal to save secret key on server or somewhere else? Probably in an environment file or something like that, or in your environment itself. Yeah. Any other questions about what, what we did code-wise here? Yes. Uh, shoot, I don't know what the standard session time is in Flask. I think they're typically about 30 minutes, something like that. But we, we could look that up, uh, Flask session length. Actually, it should say in our cookie, right, how long it's going to last for. So if I go to application and then cookies... Oh, right, true. So in terms of when it was last accessed, what is the... So it expires... Oh, this just expires at the end of the session. So it looks like it would expire, actually, if I closed out the window. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Images. Or I guess if, if I were to shut down the entire browser window, not necessarily just that tab. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes? Could you go a little bit more into like, what we expect from the MySQL queries? Because like, you said like, like if, if we attach like a, a variable to the users or not, like on a creation, it just gets the ID, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it'll get Correct. So, so if we're running a select query, um, we will get back a list, correct, of dictionaries. And then if we're running an insert query, we're going to get back just the ID of the last thing that we inserted. What, what 
cool if like we have like the week and we'll have different teams in different rooms and they all return to different things? I am not positive what delete returns. Del yeah, it's all in that uh, module you were using. Yeah, exactly. Let's check our little MySQL because it says our MySQL connection here. Let me just go like this. So yeah, <clears throat> for the update and delete queries, they will return nothing. So it actually tells you there. Yeah. Yeah, like if anyone gets caught on that quiz, all the answers are in this. Nice tip. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Good. Yes. Thumbs on this, everyone. Good. Very yeah, good. Ooh, I saw some sideways somewhere. All right. If you have sideways thumbs, please either seek me out, seek out a TA, talk to your cohort mates. Let's make sure that this makes good sense to you. All right? All right, we're done.